in that moment, I felt so embraced. Like, I knew I was going to make it out of there. It was scary, but I knew that I wasn't going to die. What's up, Aunt fam? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thanks for hanging with me today. Um, first off, I just want to start off by saying I know it has been a while. It's been a lot going on in my life and that is part of why I am here today. I'm going to talk to you guys and give you a story time about hands down the most scariest night of my life. Um, I actually was not sure if I wanted to share this with everybody. Um, but I feel like God has really been compelling me, like just really, really pushing me to share my story. And I hope that it helps somebody else. Um, and then today, like I went to church and the pastor preached about just before I get started. I do want to let you guys know this night literally has changed me in every way, shape, form possible mentally physically emotionally spiritually yeah so um all right so i'll get started so i just recently had a birthday my birthday's in july it's mid-july i celebrated had a good time um there were some friends that couldn't make it to the brunch event that i had so we decided that we were just gonna do dinner plans later. So normally when I go out, I normally don't do too many stops in between. I normally just get to where I'm going and then I make it back home. So this particular day, um, I worked, it was a Friday night and I made plans to have dinner with two of my friends. Good friends, been friends since high school. They, they kind of live close to each other, so the plan was just for one of them to meet at the other house. I go scoop them, we go to dinner, and then come back, and then I go home. So, um, we made it to dinner. We had an amazing time. Everything was great. Food was good. And then we dropped off the first friend, and my second friend, I didn't want her to, she uber there but i didn't want her to like uber back so i'm like i'll take you home that's no problem so we're driving and we're driving down a main street in chicago i don't know if i've been down this street before um maybe not in like deep in that area like it's, it's a main street it's an expressway exit i'll say that and i, I i'm hesitant i don't want to give too many details because I don't know who did this to me and I don't want, I don't know them, I don't want them to know me. My windows are tinted, um, so they don't even know that it was me in a car with whatever had went down. So I'm, I'm not going to give too many details because I would just hate for that person to find out that I was the victim, you know, it was me that they did this to and them to try to come and I don't know. So we're driving down this, this street. We approach what I think is a stop sign. I honestly, my memory is, I don't know, a little jarred. The whole thing flashed before me. So I stopped because there was a car in front of me that had stopped. There was a man standing on the corner and the man, like it happened so fast, but this man just started shooting at the car in front of me. And it kind of took me a little while to understand what was happening because it was July. And I'm just thinking this is like a teenager just popping firecrackers at a car, which is something that's not uncommon. Um, so when I realized like, oh my gosh, like these aren't firecrackers. This random stranger is just shooting at this car in front of me. This man turns to me and mind you, He's probably like 10 feet away from me. I'm, I'm on a, a street. He's standing at the corner. I'm like approaching like the stop sign. So he's literally looking in my direction. But my cars are tent. I don't know if this man thought that I was with the 
car in front of me or if he thought that I don't know I could be a quote-unquote witness um, but he turns to my car and shoots my car up just just random just just shoots my car up <sighs> So, my friend, I love you, Nia, <laughs> who was in the car with me, she instantly, like, I think, both, like, maybe the first shot I had going out, maybe I had not, but she was already, like, like, she was in the passenger seat, she had already, like, jumped kind of over my head, it was just like, just go, so I'm flooring it, I'm not saying where I'm going, I'm hearing one shot, two shots. Three shot, four shot, five shot, six shot, seven shot, eight, nine, ten. Like it was over ten shots all on my driver's side. Like this man was literally out to kill. Um, and I just remember in that moment saying, like, dang, like when is he gonna stop shooting? And perfect timing when I finally stopped hearing the gunshots. I, I feel like God just lifted my head up. Like he lifted my head up at the exact moment because as soon as I lifted my head up, I was like, I don't even know how I did not hit the cars, but I went from being on my side and because I was driving, looking down, I ended up on the other side of the street and I was like this close from smashing into a bunch of parked cars. So it's like, God lifted my head up and I hurried up and veered back onto my side. And I, <laughs> like, in that moment, y'all, I don't know, like, I didn't even know what to think. Like, I just, it happened so fast. Like, we literally just having a good time, enjoyed our night, had a great dinner, and now I'm in a freaking life or death situation. God is so good. We made it to my friend's house and I got out of my car and y'all like, I'm not even gonna show the pictures. It, I'm still not there to where I can look at it and stomach it. But these bullet holes were huge and they were, it was probably about three or four in my front driver's side door where I was driving, probably about another three or four in the rear. And I'm thinking like, what if my kids were in the car with me? Like what if my kids, <laughs> what if my kids were in the car with me? You know? Thank God they weren't, <laughs> but like my, I couldn't stomach it. Like when I got out of the car and I saw that and I'm just like, this is where my baby's car seats are. Like, how could it, how could a stranger, like a stranger, you know, just, just do that. <laughs> Is like an innocent person that they don't even know like oh my gosh like God is so good y'all like God is so good like he saved me it was a little late like it was a little bit after 11 so I don't have my kids out that late anyway but I'm just like man like what if I lived in the area and I was just taking my kids home like what if we came from a family park like anything like I'm just an innocent person just trying to make it home and it's happened so I look at my car my car is Jack, like it's just bullet holes all on my driver's side and my trunk. Like this dude literally, like he had to have been running on foot chasing my car. Um, but when I tell you the way the car looked on the outside, like God is so good. You will op you could open the car doors and you wouldn't even know what happened. Because all but one, and I'll get to that, but every single bullet got stuck in my door panel. Like it made it 
inside and it got stuck. It did not make it into my car. And another thing, none of my windows were shattered. So this this dude like shot low. He did not shoot none of my glasses because if he would have shot through one of my glass, you know, that could have been that could have been it for me, for us, for my friend. So um no windows were touched, thank God. They all the bullets went through the panel and only one made it through. Um, I don't know if you guys know, like on the driver's side door, that's like a little radio or like the speaker from where the radio comes through. It made it through there and it pierced my leather seat and I was bleeding from my thigh. So honestly, the, the ambulance couldn't even tell if it was a graze or if it was just debris from the metal from it coming into my, um, from like the bullet piercing through my door, hitting my leg. Um, my skin was was welted, so it they they deemed it a graze. It was, but but it's all healed. Like everything looks fine. Um, it honestly could have been worse, and I was just bleeding from like two other places. Those were for sure debris, but this one on my thigh where my leather seat was pierced, like I'm pretty sure that there was a graze. Um, but the first thing I did when I got to my friend's house, like my husband was on his way, my sister-in-law came through, like, I just think everybody that came through in that moment and that night and everybody that's just been there for me afterwards, like helping me overcome my trauma. But the first thing I did was I got on my knees and prayed because I was so shook. I like, I was shaken up, but I knew that. There have been so many other people that that have been in a situation like that with not nearly as many bullets and that have not made it. So I knew like in that moment, like God, God has me here for a reason. Like God saved me. It's just so crazy because thinking back in that moment, I'm like, I felt a covering. Like I felt like you cannot tell me God doesn't exist. Angels aren't real. Like I felt... In that moment, I felt so embraced. Like, I knew I was going to make it out of there. It was scary, but I knew that I wasn't going to die. If I can't explain it, it's just a spiritual covering that was over my life. I'll tell you about the series of events that led up to that moment. How I knew, like, God was protecting me. So... It's so important, like it's so important to pray, to call your angels, to call protection, um, to make sure that God is just first in your life. So normally when I go out, I normally like, you know, I'm listening to my music. I'm about to have a good time with my friends. We're about to go to dinner. I'm normally in my car like jamming. Um, but God had already recently put put it on my heart that he doesn't want me to listen to certain type of music and I learned you know that certain things like if I'm singing along to these this music I'm I could be manifesting you know what's in a song like it's a lot of music out here that is just not good um things that I just shouldn't be repeating and God already put that on my heart so the night I was going out I kid you not I was I had a quiet moment with God I was like I'm not even gonna listen to music I'm just going to pray. And I think another reason why I wanted to pray so heavily was because it was out of the norm for me. Like normally when I hang out, like I said, I go to my destination and I come back home. I don't really stop and pick up friends and stuff. Um, those were the plans we made, but those were also not really aligned with how I normally hang out. I normally grab it myself and get back home, you know, because when I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. Uh, but this was different and because I was doing something different, I spent the entire ride praying. I was praying so heavily. Like I didn't I I don't even pray like this before I go out. Like I pray, but I was praying very differently. Like I was literally calling angels to me. I was asking God to protect me, to cover me, Lord. Please let me make it home safely. Cover my car. And the reason why I was praying so heavily about shielding my car is because 
in Chicago right now, it's a lot of theft going on. It's a lot of stick ups, people trying to rob you for your vehicle. And I was just thinking like, you know, I'm going out without my husband. I don't want to get stuck up. Like, I don't want nobody trying to rob me. Like, so I literally spoke and asked God to cover me and shield me and shield my car. I literally spoke that. And that morning, I also did something very different that was out of normal where I'm like full circle. God was preparing me for this moment. Like, God, guys, hey, man. That morning, I was working. I called my husband. He was out working. And I was like, babe, you've been sharing your location with me for almost two years. And you never asked me to share my location with you. And I was like, I'm going to share my location with you just in case something happens to me. And you need to know where I'm at or you need to get to me. Like, literally, that, that morning of when that happened... I decided to share my location with my husband. Like, first of all, we've been married for years. We've been together for over 13 years. And that moment, that day was the day I decided I got a thought to share my location with him. And what triggered that was because I saw like this girl had got kidnapped on TikTok, something crazy, and her boyfriend was like able to track her down. But like nothing happens by chance or by accident. Like God put that in my feet to put that on my heart for me to do that. Because in that moment when that did happen later on, I couldn't even call my husband. I was so frantic. My friend had to call him for me. He already knew where I was at. He went right to my location and he was able to get to me safely. Post-trauma, thinking about now that this has happened and now that this is a traumatic experience that's you know always going to be in the back of my mind i dealt with P ptsd like really bad like i couldn't sleep i was having nightmares um i have really bad insomnia i'm still suffering from insomnia like i'm getting better like thanks to prayers i'm in therapy for the first time in my life and let me tell you like, if you hurt and you're going to go to a doctor and mentally, if you hurt, you need to go to a therapist. Like, I'm all for it. That has helped me tremendously. I made sure to get a therapist that, that is aligned spiritually. You know, they're a believer just like me. Um, also happens, she's from the same city. So she understands, like, trauma that, that you know, that I'm dealing with. It took me a long time to get to a point of healing. And I'm not going to say I'm 100% healed, um, but I'm well enough to tell my story and I'm healed enough to tell God's purpose in this. At first, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I almost died. Like, I can't believe, like, I almost lost my life. Like, I've been through a near death experience and. I connected the dots like through prayer, through therapy, talking to my friends. It's like, I didn't almost die. Like, I wasn't in that situation to die. Like, that was never the case. Like, this is a rebirth in my life. Like, that's what that is. So when I started, like, understanding, like, that situation wasn't meant to kill me. You know, what don't kill you make you stronger. That was totally to make me stronger because ever since that has happened, like, I see life from a new angle. I feel like that was a new birthday for me. And thank you to my friend Stephanie for helping me with that clarification. God like rebirth me in that moment now i am stronger in my faith and like god has been talking to me spiritually and i like really just i can't explain it but it was life-changing and i'm not gonna say that i'm glad that it happened but 
I'm glad that I'm able to heal the way that I'm healing. I'm glad that I'm able to connect and get closer to God the way I'm getting closer to him. Um, I'm just seeing things for what they really are. Like, I, prior to this happening, you know, I'm, I I have a, had a strong relationship with God. I, I, you know, I go to church every Sunday. I teach my kids. Um, me and my husband, we pray together. Me and my family, we pray together every night. But... I was lukewarm like I I was I feel like I was really like lukewarm and some of you guys may know what that means some of you may not but there's still parts of the world that were on and attached to me and I don't want to be worldly like I'm in this world I'm not of this world like I'm supposed to be here living for Christ every in every area of my life and everything that I do. You should look at me and you should see the love of God. And there are some ways about me. Like I said, my music, the taste, my taste in music is trash. Like it really is. The music that I listen to, the things that I allow my ears to hear, even some of the things I allow my mind, my eyes to see, you know, that's that you have to you have to be careful with that because the enemy can slip through all ways shapes and forms he know what you like he know what you don't like so of course he's gonna tempt you with, with what you like um i just i just want to just live for god like that's my purpose that's what i want to do i don't want people to look at me and see anything else besides god like a lot of things that I still held on to that was worldly, I'm just letting go. He's not going to meet me in my life and I'm never going to be able to accomplish things that I want to accomplish and get things that I want or live that, that full peaceful life that God has planned and aligned for me if I'm still holding on to the world. So I hope that blesses somebody. I just have to stop and thank my family and friends that have been there for me. Um, starting with my husband, of course, my mom, like my mom, we did not tell my mother what happened. Like my husband did not want to tell her over the phone. So like a few hours after it happened, he drove to her house, picked her up and then told her when she was in the car. Um, and then she came to me and she spent the entire weekend. Like I said, that happened on a Friday. So she spent the entire weekend with me, just loving on me. Um, cooking for me and my kids and so mom if you're watching this I love you I thank you so much for your love and support and then all of my friends like when I tell you it's now like the end of September I have had friends visit me every single weekend like every weekend <laughs> It was a friend that came over to just love on me. Um, and even some of the friends that couldn't make it here, like they've been calling me, like I've gotten flowers, I've gotten um, just gifts in the mail. Um, one of my friends bought me a women's prayer journal, that stuff was like helping me connect all of these dots. Um, I have a new Bible now, like, I just thank you all um, for just loving on me and you guys have really helped to show like like my life is so valuable. I thank God for showing me like wow like Kiara your life is so valued. Look at all these people that love you that are checking in and care for you like and also like you have so much more life to live. You have a purpose like you have a meaning here like this was not to take you out. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. And when I say that, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. My mother taught me that scripture and I say that all of the time. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And <laughs> look, I'm just here to tell you like you need covering, you need protection. Like before you walk out of the door in the morning, pray like ask God to cover you like I never wake up 
without getting on my knees asking God to show me, show my children, like they're going away to school, show my husband, show my mother, my father, my siblings, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, my friends, my loved ones. Like you really do have to pray because we are in this world with principality. Like there are things and wickedness that is going on that we don't even know about or that we can't see through our naked eyes. So you have to have the shielding and the covering and the protection of God and his angels. You want to be on the winning team because the winning team is always going to win. It's always going to prevail. So you want to make sure that you are praying and asking God for that covering and that protection. And also, like, I pray for love, favor, mercy, and grace from God because I'm not perfect. Thank God for your mercy. Thank you for the favor, for the things that you've done for me. But that shielding and that protection, you need it. Like you, We cannot live in this wicked world without God. If you could get insurance for your car, for your house, you need to get insurance for your soul. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um... There's just a lot of things that I have learned through this process. Like, I had no idea that the enemy was, like, big on music. And then we wonder why the music is so wicked. I'm just trying to say you need protection. You need God's covering. Like, we cannot be in this world without his protection. And I know from the bottom of my heart the reason why I am alive today is because of that prayer that I prayed on my way there. Like I went deep in prayer and God saved me. He saved my life. Um, I also want to just mention like, just like there's good people out here, it's bad people out here. Um, I'll never understand why that guy did what he did. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't, like I said, I don't know if he thought that I was a witness to him shooting at the car in front of me or if he was just out on the corner shooting people. But all I can say is just wicked people out here. So when this wickedness in this world, you need to make sure you just have, you just stay it up with the prayer of God. Um, and another thing I will say, like this is this is crazy because like I said, the series of events that have happened around this circumstance has just really truly like shown me like God had his hands all over this situation. I was on TikTok that morning. Okay, so remind you, this is the same morning that I called my husband and shared my location. The same day where I said that long prayer about protection and covering and covering me in my car. I also was on TikTok and I saw like this woman and she was praying against like like wickedness and witchcraft and she was like, you know, um, you never know like somebody is like trying to do any witchcraft on you and I was like, dang, I'm like, yeah, people are wicked and let me pray against that. So I just started binding wicked spirits and I was just praying. I'm like, Lord, I bound any thing that is not of you like I pray against witchcraft and I pray against all like wicked spirits or anything that is sent to harm me because you never know like somebody could really be out here just hating on you um praying on your downfall so I I I asked God to rebuke all of that and sure enough I I cannot make this up I went on my Instagram and a witch started following me that same day I looked and her name was like Madam something um and I just know that her entire Instagram was like candles and pictures of people and she said I do love her bio had like I do love spells and I like just witchcraft I could not believe that one why is this one is people out here doing witchcraft too why is this random witch following me on Instagram? And she decided to follow me after I did that prayer. So in my mind, that was God revealing that some wickedness had their eye on me. Because 
why would a witch follow me? Like, you're doing love spells. Why are you following me? What, I don't... I'm not about that life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't believe in none of that. Them spells, crystals, stones. No, no, none of that. None of that. That is, no. I'm praying and that's it. Um... You know the tarot. She's that's that's another thing she did. She did love spells. She had tarot readers. Like that stuff is not. That stuff is is satanic. That stuff is not of God. So for her to follow me, that was just like wow. Like here I am. I'm praying and I'm binding these things in the spirit, and then God reveals that some some you know. Wickedness had their eye on me, so I immediately blocked her. Um, but that was eye opening. That's like, wow, like people are really out here. Like I said, you just have to just, just pray and ask God to cover your soul because this world is just full of wickedness. And I'm just like, wow, I can't believe I had children in this crazy world. Um, but this is why we pray. We ask God to cover us. We ask him to shield and protect us. No weapon formed against us shall ever be able to prosper. Like you really just have to cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. Um, and then there's one more thing. There was a video that I saw that morning. Um, and it was this guy at this tow yard. And he was like, oh, this is what I call the Chicago special. You know, like there's people that work um, at tow yards or like they're like auto adjusters where they go look at vehicles or. And I'm just scrolling and he's like, oh, this is what I call the Chicago special. And in hindsight, now that I'm like out of the situation, I'm like, wow, I was getting all the signs that morning. But that video, that was actually the first video I had seen on TikTok that day. It was, when he said Chicago Special, I'm like, oh, this, this car probably going to be shot up. And sure enough, it was. It was shot up on the driver's side and the trunk, just like my car was later that day. So, I know that God is real. Just the signs and the series of events and the circumstances and everything that just has transpired leading up until that moment and after that moment. I know that God is real, but I'm not about to play with him. I'm not playing with nobody out here. I'm not playing with my spirit. Like, I am in my word. I'm getting closer to him. Um, certain ways, like I said, certain things that's worldly, I am letting go. And I want to be guaranteed that I am getting into heaven, not just being lukewarm like I was. So, I just thank God for revealing that to me and I know this was a long video but I had to get it out in church today my pastor preached about like submission like today was the day for me to share this and 